One of the most popular winter sports is center stage this week in Minnesota. The National Curling Championships are taking place in Duluth. And if you've ever watched curling in the Olympics or in person, maybe you've done it yourself, you know there is a lot of strategy when it comes to the sport. But did you know there is a science that goes into making the ice for curling? In Chaska, Jared Piepenberg takes a closer look, and Jared says this is pretty interesting stuff. It it is, it is. We threw out a bunch of terms here early this morning. Now we have uh, someone walking by in front throwing water out on the ice. And Scott, uh, want, want to tell us what's going on? We, we, we cut off part of the ice earlier, we scraped it, and now we're throwing more water on. Yeah, we're putting the pebble down, which is the, uh, which is the surface that will go down and freeze. The pebble will go down and freeze on the ice real quickly. And that's what allows that rock to glide nice and easy. Uh, down the ice, so it, uh, it's just like little it lifts bumps, it up. right? Little bumps, almost like an orange peel type of texture. Yeah, you can kind of see that here as we're standing over it. So it's just not flat ice, which some people may think so. Uh, and this actually plays a factor on allowing the the rock to have different friction, so it actually will curl. Hence the name of curling. That's correct. You can do different size pebble heads to create more curl or less curl, um, and uh, and that that just kind of helps with with controlling the the uh, speed and curl of the, of the stone. Uh, it doesn't matter the the temperature of the water he throws on. Do we have to move here out of this? Uh, we're gonna <laughs> move. We're gonna move in a minute. Yeah. yeah. Um, it uh, the temperature of the water does matter. You want it to be a, a bit warmer, hotter. That drives the oxygen out of the water mm -hmm. when it's warm or hot. And uh, having it drive the oxygen out will allow for a harder pebble. And it last longer through the game. So we're talking like about the so much of the science, but even with the pebbling, there's a lot goes into how fast that you walk and, and uh, how fast you're swinging your arm to throw it. Like there, there's so much behind this that it's just gonna be uh, mind boggling. Yeah, the, you want that, uh, you want your pebblers to go about 40 seconds from back line to back line. Uh, so we do actually have a stopwatch in our hand and we're mm -hmm. timing ourselves as we go. Uh, up and down the ice. And then the next step is you use the fun little tool here and now you just cut off the top of the pebbles, correct? Yeah, we're going to nip actually what we call nipping or clipping mm -hmm. um, and that will be set at a very shallow angle and that will take the very top of the pebble off and create speed and curl. Yes, and then uh, there's we were talking about it earlier, the goals, to how much you want the, the rock or stone to actually curl, move from left to right or right to left uh, as you start playing. And we got some folks out here this morning now joining us. Yeah, we do. We got a few of our members out here practicing this morning, which is great. And um, yeah, we're trying to create at least four feet of curl and about 25 seconds speed of the ice. Yeah, so that's from throwing out like he just did over there to how, how long it takes to get over there to uh, basically the bullseye if someone's never even looked at it, right? Yeah, yeah that's called a house. Yep. And you're, you're absolutely right, Jared. It would be from the near hog line or that black line we see out here yep. to the far T line. If that uh, rock travels for 25 seconds to that, that's really good shape. Excellent. Yeah, so a lot going on here this morning. Thanks, Scott, for, for joining us. Uh, we're going to let these folks get to curling, and hopefully I'll throw out a couple stones here. Too. It's been a little while since I've been out on the ice. Awesome. Back to you guys in the studio.